Hello, hello. Hello. Good Hi, good evening. How are you? Hi. Hey, fine, thank you. You're fine? Okay. Hey, how's the weather? Yeah. Is it raining? Yes. Hello. Yes, right. yes. You know, in here we are having a very heavy rain. Está lloviendo bien fuerte por acá, pero aún así estamos aquí con todos los ánimos. Bienvenido, yes. clase. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening, Norma. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey, nice to see you. Hello. Happy Monday, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. How was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend or not? Yes, I have a good Yes, weekend. right. Did you rest? <laughs> Descansaron. Did you rest? Yes. Oh. I visited my mom. <laughs> really? You visited your mom? Okay. No, my grandma. Your grandpa? Grandma. Grandma, okay. Your grandma. Yeah. What did you do? ¿Qué más hicieron? Practiquemos el pass, el simple pass. What did you do? I was yesterday celebration, birthday mm -hmm. by father. Really? Wow. Yes. That was nice. Yes. What else did you do, class? That's it. Bye. Do you know how many students do we have as of right now? We are 11. Okay, let's wait for your classmates. Hey, look, I was reading the chat and I could notice that some of you are new in this course. A veces algo que se nos escapó preguntar al inicio. ¿Cuántos es primera vez que recibían un curso con inglés corporativo? ¿Sí? Para tomarnos un poquito del tiempo de revisar plataforma. ¿Ok? Entonces hagámoslo ahora. Llevamos ya una semana juntos. Y no es tarde, no es tarde para que aclaremos cualquier punto de plataforma que, que exista duda. ¿Sí? ¿Cuál es el avance que tenemos que hacer en cada semana? Para que al final no nos vayamos a atrasar. También en el chat pueden preguntar, pero a ver si podemos ayudar. Exactly. Vamos a ver. Ya somos 16. How many do we have in this group? Déjenme revisar. ¿Cuántos son en este grupo? Let's see. This is intermedio, right? Yes. yes. O son básicos, ¿no, verdad? Of course It's not. Claro que ya no somos básicos. Ok, from 8 to 9. A group from 8 to 9. Vale, ahorita so, lo busco. Just give me a moment. Yeah. So, according to this list, 23, son 23 en el grupo, ¿sí? 23 students. It means that we are still missing a couple of you. Ya son 16 en la clase, faltan un poquito. 16 students already. Vaya. So let's move on. You know, let me take some minutes to take you to the platform. There we are going to review about the different sections that we have there. Vale, por lo que creo que sí ya todos ingresamos a plataforma, ¿verdad? O por lo menos ven reflejado el curso que estamos desarrollando ahorita. ¿Cuál es? Inglés, intermedio, módulo 1. Ajá, a todos debería de aparecernos el inglés intermedio módulo 1. Cuando ustedes accesan al curso, vamos a dar esta información así en Spanish para que se comprenda. El curso de cuatro semanas 
lo dividimos en cinco secciones. Ya estuvimos juntos la semana pasada de lunes a jueves. Eso representa una semana. La primera semana de trabajo, de sesiones, abarca todos los temas de la section number one and section number two, ¿sí? Nuestra meta para la semana anterior, el día, día viernes se hace la revisión o se envían los resultados el viernes. Era completar la sección uno y sección número dos. Cada sección nos dice cuántos son los ejercicios a completar. Mira en la sección 1, ¿cuántos deberíamos de haber finalizado de la sección 1? Five. Five exercises. From section number two, we have three, three exercises. ¿sí? Y todos los ejercicios se identifican por hay como un lapicito que se llama. Me parece. No sé si les aparece a ustedes en español o en inglés. Debería de estar en inglés. Sí. Knowledge checked. Es representado por un lápiz similar al de que les estaba mostrando. Entonces, knowledge checked. Su meta es complementar todos los ejercicios de la sección 1 y 2 la primera semana. Como ya nos vamos a mover a la semana número 2. En la semana 2 solo vemos ya una sección. ¿Cuál sección nos corresponde de este lunes al jueves? 3. ¿Sí? La sección 3 tiene algo, una variante igual, igual que la sección 5. Porque se encuentra una evaluación. Yes. La evaluación no necesitamos esperar a la clase para completarla. No, ustedes también lleven su propio ritmo. Lo que sí es necesario es que esos tres ejercicios más, los siete ejercicios del midterm exam, que es un repaso de todo eso que ya vimos anteriormente, estas dos secciones, llamémoslas así, dos grupos de preguntas, para el día jueves tienen que estar finalizadas, ¿sí? Es nuestra meta, la sección 3 en esta semana. La siguiente semana, que sería nuestra semana 3, juntos, solo van a completar la sección 4, pero como la sección 4 solo tiene... Dos ejercicios, no, teacher, eso es muy poquito. No duden en revisar los contenidos de la sección 5. Que si se fijan también, solo hay un ejercicio en la sección 5, entonces fácilmente pueden abarcar sección 4 y 5 juntos para que en nuestra última semana nos quedemos con el final exam, ¿sí? En todos los módulos que vayamos subiendo. Ya vamos por el intermedio 1, intermedio 2, intermedio 3. Es la misma forma de trabajo. ¿Por qué explico eso nuevamente? Para aquellos compañeros, que es primera vez que los tenemos en un curso de inglés corporativo y que tal vez estábamos dudando sobre el uso de plataformas. Pero hicieron muy bien, hicieron muy bien en consultar. Eh, es primera vez que estoy en el curso, leí en el chat. Sí, pidan ayuda. Siempre hay una persona encargada en el chat de poder darles ese soporte técnico, ¿ok? Si sí, no soy yo, siempre son los mismos compañeros que son bien proactivos en ayudar al compañero que está consultando o es alguien del de grupo de inglés corporativo. Así que ahí estamos. Cualquier duda, háganla llegar. Okay. So, nice to see you. La mayoría con cámaras apagadas. Creería que es por la lluvia, si no. Vamos, cameras on. Class, do you remember about the topic from Thursday? Let's make a quick review. 
What were we discussing on Thursday? Do you remember mm. this topic? Mm. We were practicing what? The use of? In the indirect questions. If you see here, I have four, eight examples about direct questions. So what is the difference between a direct question and an indirect question? ¿Por qué tengo que hacer esa diferencia entre directas e indirectas? When are we going to use indirect questions class? ¿Quién se acuerda? ¿Por qué ocupo indirect questions? ¿Cuál es la razón, el motivo para ocupar estas? Yes, tell me. Solo uno, just one. It's more polite. Polite, ok. ¿Qué más? Which are more polite, the indirect, right? ¿Con quién I hope ocupaba estas preguntas? Preguntas indirectas. With whom am I going to use this information? Busquen palabras claves acá. With the strangers or people we do not know well. Yes. Can I use this type of questions with people from work? People from your workplace. Can we use this type of questions with my boss? Can we use this type of questions with my teacher or classmates? What is your opinion? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. If so, why? Why can we use this type of questions? Give me a valid reason. Why? Because probably it's people that I don't know well. Okay? Anyway, it's because it's very formal. Vamos a practicar a ver si recuerdan. Number one, háganme una pregunta indirecta, indirect question. Number one. Hey, where can I rent my car? Make the question, please. Where can I rent a car? Mm, could you tell me where I can rent a car? Yes, that's all right. How much does a city tour cost? Do you know how much does a city tour one more time, do you know? Do you know how much does a city tour cost? Chicos, ¿le incluyamos el does o no? ¿Qué se acuerdan? No. no. Ah, no. ¿Saben por qué no? Porque does es un verbo auxiliar. Yeah. We don't yeah. need to include does. Eliminémoslo entonces y redactémoslo otra vez. Do you know okay. how much... Y como le quité el auxiliar, ¿cuál es el verbo? Cost. ¿Qué Cost. pasa con el verbo? Cost. Exacto, ya eliminé el auxiliar, ahora sí el verbo se conjuga. Number three, how early do, tengo otro verbo auxiliar, quitémoslo. How early do the stores open. Vamos. Open. Next question. Do you know? Can you tell me? Yes. Vale. Let's do something. Se la sigo proyectando y quiero ver el chat. Vámonos al chat. Solo vamos a hacer dos más. Number three. Escribanlas en el chat ahorita. Make it in direct right now. How early do the stores open? Háganla indirecta, por favor. 
Go, 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 class. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, could you? Could you tell me, or do you know? Mm, ok, revisemos la información. Mm, kind of, Marlon, un poquito. Vamos a corregir algo ahí, Marlon. Revisemos esto. The stores, is this singular or plural? This is? I make it singular. I make it singular. Ajá, uh -huh. the stores. Uh, Vean ese que es el final, yes. the stores. Reemplacémosla por un pronombre. Ah. Entonces, en ese caso, sí, el verbo no se conjuga porque no es una tercera persona, ¿verdad? So, can you tell me how early the stores open? Exactly, Margarita. Can you tell me? Cristina, creo que ahí combinamos la 3 y la 4. No. I guess, because I didn't get it. Class, number four. <laughs> Don't you worry. Number four. Where is, where is the nearest Wi-Fi hotspot? Ah, uh, okay. Is mom. Sí está bien redactada la, la pregunta, pero es plural, acuérdense. Las tiendas, the stores. Okay. Can you tell me where is the nearest Wi-Fi hotspot? Yes, Mario, great job. Number four class, number four. You need to be the first one. Vamos, sean los primeros. Make the question for number four. You know, in this case, it's very easy. ¿Saben por qué es fácil la número cuatro? Why is it easy? Porque no hay ningún verbo auxiliar. Entonces, ¿qué hice nada más? Agregar, so can you tell me? Y el verbo principal lo llevo hasta el final. Can you tell me where the nearest Wi-Fi spot is? Recuerden que esa es la regla, es la condición. El verbo pasa hasta el final, ¿sí? Y si hay auxiliar, lo quito, simplemente lo quito. Eliminamos. Go. Go away. Y tenemos el cuidado del verbo. Una más. Number five. Eh, yes, Margarita. Number five. Quitemos esto de aquí. Go class. Number five. Usando la expresión, can you tell me or do you know? Go, please. Make the question. Number five, how much does a taxi to the airport cost? Vamos, typing, typing. Everybody's typing right now. Mm -hmm. At least one, por lo menos uno que lo envía al chat. Go, please. Type your answer, your reply. I know you can do it. Luz, tell me. I, I'm listening to you. Do you know how much cost a taxi to the airport? Mm, all right. But you know what? Whenever we have an auxiliary, cuando hay un auxiliar, no hay problema. Dejemos el verbo al final también. No importa, ¿ok? Otra vez, Luz. Can you yeah. tell me? Okay. Do you know how much a taxi yes. to the paper costs? Excellent. Oh. Great pronunciation. Yes. To so the airport cost. How about this verb class? Tenemos que conjugarlo o no? ¿Qué piensan? How much does a taxi to the airport? Ajá, Norma, en Edwin, ¿qué pasó ahí con el verbo? ¿Saben por qué ellos no lo están conjugando? ¿Ya vieron el chat? Mm -hmm. 
Pongo ambas respuestas acá. Cuando ocupamos el do you know, el do ya me está sirviendo como un auxiliar, ¿sí? Ya no conjugo, pero si ya ocupamos el can you tell me, no hay ningún auxiliar, ¿verdad? It's not an auxiliary in this idea. So, in number one, do you know how much a taxi to the airport, airport cost? Have about the second idea. Y aquí si le agrego o no le agrego eso. Yes or not? Yes. Yes, why? Why do we need to add an S or to conjugate these ones? Porque no llevo la auxiliar. Muy bien. bien. Por eso. Entonces depende de su redacción. Tengamos el cuidado del uso de los auxiliaries. Ya, yes, el auxiliar no me deja modificar. It's not letting me change the verb. It needs to remain in the base form. Okay? Questions about this exercise. This was the last exercise from Thursday, but we didn't have time to listen or read to the replies. Okay? Keep on practicing these topics. Let's move on to section number three. But before, let me check the attendance list. ¿Quién está en la clase ahora? Revisemos. Number one. Ana Yamilet Hernández. Is Ana in the class today? In the chat. Where? Here? Zoom or, or where? where is Then it? I go to internet. I, I haven't read the chat. I won't be able to connect the term. Okay. But is she here in the class or not? Está conectado. Anna, Anna, let me look for Anna. Not right. I guess she's not. Bye. Me van a ayudar, chicos, a buscarlos si no los escucho. Cristina Claribel okay. Chavarría. Present. Excellent. Dayana Abigail Alvarado. Present. Ok, Dayana. Edma Azalia Marina. Present teacher. Great job. Edwin Alexander Hercules. Is Edwin in the class today? Eli Antonio Sandoval. Present. Okay, Eli, great job. Georgina Beatriz Perez. Present. All right, excellent. Elmer Antonio Landaverde. Present. Ok, Elmer. Jeffrey Mauricio Guzmán. Here, coach. Ok, great job. Jennifer Raquel Ayala. Here. Ok, Jennifer. Jonathan Alexander Molina. Is Jonathan in the class? Ok, he's absent. Catherine Jasmine Guatemala. Ok, Catherine. Laura Concepción Mena. Laura. Present. Ok, Laura, excelente. Luz Clara de la O Fuentes. Present, teacher. Ok, excelente. Margarita Abigail Tobías. Present. Ok, Margarita Mario Eduardo Sura. Present. Ok, Mario. Marlon Edenilson Pérez. Present. Excelente. Melvin Gerardo Canales. Present teacher. Ok, excelente. Norma Elizabeth Callejas. Present. Ok, 
Okay, Norma. Norma Elizabeth Lizano. Present teacher. Excellent. Rosa Ibet Garcia. Present teacher. Excellent. Silvia Lizeth Melara. Present teacher. Great. And Stephanie Jamilet Perez. Okay. I am missing Stephanie, Jonathan, Edwin Alexander, and Anne. Okay. Pero miren, muy buena asistencia a este grupo. Los felicito. Estamos constantes. Yes, Cristina, tell me. Edwin, Edwin is a person. Did he write? Okay, let me check this chat. Oh, present. Oh, there you go, Edwin. Thank you, Cristina. Edwin, ya le pusimos. Ah, pues solo me quedan dos pendientes. Clase, muy buena asistencia la de ahora. Excellent. You know, for today we have a new topic. ¿Qué creen que vamos a hablar en la section number three? Any idea about section number three? Maybe countable and countable now? Mm, probably not. Let's move on to section number three. I thought you were checking the platform. I really like that. House in apartment. Ah, uh, exactly. We are going to introduce some extra vocabulary. As you may see, let me take you to the platform. Section three, objective, 3.0 lesson objective. What do we need to do? ¿Quién me ayuda a leer esta información? Vamos, ¿de qué vamos a hablar en la section number three? Go, please, practice your English. Solo uno, just one. Great job, Luz, go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. Did you answer? Sorry. Don't worry. Okay, go, go ahead. Please, Luz. Luz, go ahead. And then you, Norma. Don't worry. Okay. Skills with the lesson and adjectives and nouns. By the end of this class, you will learn how to express your opinions about houses and apartments. Additionally, you will be able to describe your house or apartment in English and use evaluating, evaluating phrases. I stopped listening to you. Hola. Uh, keep on, keep on reading. Hello. Yeah, now we can. Hasta donde me escucharon? Here, and use evaluating phrases. Okay, and use evaluating phrases such as apartments are too small for pets, houses are too expensive, or houses cost too much money. Great job, thank you. So what do we need to do? Tomemos palabras claves. By the end of this class, you will learn how, how to express your opinions. Vamos a opinar de qué? About houses and apartments. Y vamos a hacer algo en específico. We are going to use evaluating phrases. So my class, do you live in a house or in an apartment? Where do you live? House or apartment? Do you live in a house? You live in a house and the rest of you? Where do you live? House. A house. In apartments. In an apartment, okay. Is your house or apartment big or small? Big? Is it big? It's big. Okay. So, you see, desde que ya decimos, my house is big, my house is small, I am giving or expressing an opinion. Lo que le vamos a agregar un poquito más de vocabulary para evaluar su casa. Let's listen. 
veamos rapidito esta información. Pero siempre nos vamos más que todo a lo que tenemos en las diapositivas. Let's listen to this information class. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you will be able to give your opinion about houses and apartments. Additionally, you will be able to evaluate your own house and apartment. For example, you'll be able to make the following statements. Apartments are too small for pets, but houses are too expensive. Houses cost too much money. Before I talk about the grammar involved in this particular class, what I would like to do now is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. We will listen to a few people talk about their opinions on houses and apartments. Okay, but before we listen, I motivate you to listen for key words or part of the information that we are going to use at the end of this exercise. ¿Qué palabras claves puede escuchar? The use of adjectives like small, spacious, modern, and all of those adjectives that we probably can use to describe an apartment or a house. Aquí vamos, let's listen. Your task is to listen carefully and answer a couple of questions that I'll have for you at the end of the audio program. Apartments are too small for pets. Apartments aren't big enough for families. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments have just as many expenses as houses. Apartments don't have as many rooms as houses. Houses aren't as safe as apartments. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Houses cost too much money. Houses don't have enough closet space. Houses don't have as much privacy as apartments. Let me present some structure. Okay, what did you get from the listening? Let's see. Can you tell me some examples? What did you listen? What information or adjectives did you get? Houses are, apartments are, ¿qué escucharon? Nada, teacher, no lo entendí. Houses ¿Sí? no. are more expensive than apartments. All right, excellent. What else? That's it, so listen. Exactly, Mario. They were comparing, they were making comparison. What else? No. ¿Cómo sintieron este listening? Was it difficult? I bet at the end of this class you will be able to understand much more or to get much more information as the first time we listen to that point. Clase. If you were to pick one of these houses, so now I am going to give you the chance to go and choose one of these two houses. Which one would you pick and why? Yes? Which one? Picture number one or picture number two? Or house number one or house number two? Which one would you pick? Number one. Why? The first one. Why the first one and not this one? It's more beautiful than the second one. Great job. It's more beautiful in this one. It's bigger than because, because it's bigger. What else? It's new. Okay, if we compare, okay. Because it's it's more convenient. Oh, I like that adjective, convenient. And what adjective could you use for this house? ¿Qué adjective usarían para esta? Beautiful. Beautiful, probably. ¿Qué más? Modern. 
mother, mother. Mother, I like that mother. one. Mother and mother. y esta. ¿Qué adjetivo ocuparía? Oh, it's okay, pero un adjetivo falling. Mm, okay. Vale, vamos a aprender ese. How can we make? ¿Qué dijimos que vamos a hacer? Evaluations. We are going to make evaluations. As you were mentioning before, an evaluation most of the time is a comparison. We compare this place with this other. We complain, we compare houses with apartments. We have been practicing this structure, but with people. Ya lo ocupamos con personas, ¿sí? Cuando comparamos pero para casas o este tipo de contexto no le llamamos comparación, le llamamos una evaluation. ¿Yes? Damos nuestro punto de vista de un lugar. Con personas no vamos a decir que las evaluamos, ¿verdad? No. We give probably an opinion or a comment about them. But with houses, apartments or places, even countries, we make evaluations. What do we need to use? We can use adjectives and we can also use nouns. Primera parte del ejercicio, let's learn about vocabulary. Aprendamos algunos adjetivos y nombres, ¿ok? Section number three, class number five. Look what we have here. We have many examples of evaluations. In this case, Using adjectives. Evaluemos casas. Revisemos cuáles se pueden y cuáles no. Number one. What is the meaning of right? What is this class? Right. Right. When there is a lot of like. Ah, ok. Me encanta que vean la definición en inglés. It's a place, it's a house and space with a lot of light. It's a very bright place. Comfortable. What can you tell me about this? Comfortable. Mm -hmm. Any idea about comfortable? Or what is the meaning of comfortable in Spanish? It's a place when you can be... Eh, relaxing. I like that idea, great job. What does it mean comfortable in Spanish? Comfortable. Mm, do we say comfortable in Spanish? Probably not. Right? No. We may say comfortable, but we say cómodo. Cómodo, I like that one. Convenient. Convenient, any idea about convenient? Okay, uh, about this one, cramped, cramped. If you notice in the picture, we are using that adjective. What is a cramped place? Okay, we will find out. Dangerous. Dangerous, dark, dingy. What is this? Ah, será vocabulario nuevo. Dingy, expensive, huge, inconvenient, modern, noisy, private, quiet. Round down, round down, safe, small, and patient. Okay, this is what we have right now. Let's move on to the definition. Remember, la primera parte de el tema es vocabulary. Pido su ayuda para leer, okay? La primera que me parece es Edma. Ayúdeme con los primeros dos, Edma. Okay. Bright and dark. Give me the definition, please. Bright and bright. Look. Okay. Let me see. 
Um momento. Sim. Ok. Sim. What is dark. a bright place? Dark. Vamos ao dark. Ok. Dark, early, illuminated. 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 Ok. We have highly illuminated highly. or mm -hmm. shining. Shining. What is the opposite of bright, class? Uh, dark. 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 What is the definition of dark? Obscure. It's a poorly illuminated, illuminated. place. Para que nos acostumbramos a dar definiciones en inglés. Next one. Jeffrey, continue, please. Comfortable. Comfortable. Provides a pleasant. Pleasant. Pleasant feeling and do not give you any psychological problems. Exactly. Comfortable. Provides a pleasant comfortable. feeling. Comfortable. Yes. And do not give you any physical problems. Okay. Problems. What is a convenient place? Catherine just means. Okay, probably she's not there. Christina, what can you tell me about a convenient place? Convenient. Convenient feeling fitting. in well with a person, next activity, and plans. Great job. Fitting in well with a person's needs, activities, and plans. So, when do we say that a place is convenient? ¿Qué es conveniente? No solo se refiere a necesidades, sino también a las activities and plans. Okay, just to give you a clear example. A convenient place, it's a place or a house that probably you pay very low cost. Yes? That place is near to hospitals, parks, um, supermarkets, banks, all of those places that you need to have in hand, okay? It's a place in which people can easily get to. That's it. ¿Qué es entonces un lugar que le llamo convenient class? What is a place? ¿Qué le llamaría convenient? ¿Mm? Vamos, déme su idea. What is a convenient place? Maybe a house or a job. A house for? Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. A house for? Maybe a job. Oh, okay. Okay, probably. So, en palabras simples en Spanish, conveniente no solo a, al acceso, sino al pago también. Y también conveniente a mis necesidades. Si yo necesito una casa para dos personas, se adapta a dos personas. Convenient. No sería un lugar que la necesito para ocho personas y solo caben dos. Eso sería lo opuesto. Inconvenient. Why? It causes causing problems or difficulties. Yes? Convenient, inconvenient. Next one. Let me see. Mario Eduardo. Ayúdenme con los dos primeros. Give me the information about cramped and small. Cramp, having very little space, too small. All right. Small, small, little in size. Okay, so class, what's the difference between cramps and small? Let's make a comparison. See? ¿Sí? Diferencias entre cramped and small. No es lo mismo. ¿Alguna idea? 
Ok, ya han viajado en bus alguna vez o en un en una coaster que le decimos, ¿sí? Ya han viajado en una coaster. Yes. ¿Sí? <ríe> ¿Cómo, yes. son lo, ¿Cómo son los buses? ¿Serán grandes o pequeños? Los, los buses, los buses. Okay. They are big, big, big ones, right? Okay, sí. Pero cuando el motorista nos dice, todavía caben, hagan tres filas, tres líneas y van parados. Eso es cramped. Algo que está muy apretado. El bus puede ser grande. Ok, grande, pero no ese es el problema, sino... El very little space, little space, having very little space to move, to go through. What does it mean? That is a too small space. Okay? No tiene que ver en sí con el tamaño de el lugar o el bus o el, lo que estemos comparando, sino que es muy angosto, muy estrecho. Lo opuesto de cramped. And small. ¿Qué sería entonces? Jeffrey, Space. Mauricio, go please. Spacious. Uh -huh. What is spacious? Uh, larger with lots of extra room. Okay. It's a very large place with lots of extra room. Huge. Huge. Extremely larger inside or Amount. 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 Okay. Miren ese adjetivo. Mm. Extremely, extremely large extremely. in size or amount. Okay. Amounts of space. ¿Sí? Entonces, ¿cuál es más grande? An spacious place or a huge place? Huge. Huge, huge. right? Huge. Give me an example of an space spacious place you have visited and give me an example of a huge place you have visited so your classmates can have an idea spacious and huge yes que lugar considerarían enorme huge 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 For example, the new library. La nueva biblioteca que van a construir. ¿Cómo va a ser? ¿Qué piensan? ¿Será que va a ser a spacious, in a spacious place or a huge place to visit? Huge, right? Enorme. Muy grande. Extremely large. Very, very big. Un lugar espacioso no es si no es grande, enorme, ¿no? Sino mucho espacio, muchos corredores libres de, de utilería. Vámonos a otros dos adjetivos, ¿ok? Dangerous and safe. We have two opposite adjectives in here. Let me ask for Eli Antonio. Vamos, le dame la información, Eli. Go, please, practice. Dangerous, how or... Likely to cause harm or death. Death. I mean, able. Thank you. Able. Ay, aquí sigamos acá con safe. Safe, not in danger or likely to be harm. A dangerous place. It's a place in which you are able or likely to cause harm or death. ¿Qué lugar considerarían un lugar dangerous para vivir? A dangerous place to live. Mm -hmm. Yes. In front of the river. Ok, near or in front of a river. Claro, es muy peligroso. ¿Qué más? Safe. Safe, creo que hay muchos ejemplos. Yes. Away from danger. Okay. Look, we have some mother. Tal vez estos son nuevos para ustedes. Dingy, run down, mother and expensive. ¿Quién me ayuda? Revisemos. Practiquen su English. Elmer, los primeros dos. Mario Eduardo. 
finaliza. Go, please, Elmer. Okay. How do you pronounce the, the first word? Okay, interesting. Dingy. Dingy. Yes. Unattractive, messy. It's okay? Yes, an attractive, unattractive, and messy. Continue. Run down all an uh, intro condition. Excellent. Thank you. So, what is a dingy place? Se, se imaginan algo cuando leen ese adjetivo. Dingy. Unattractive and messy place. Desordenado. Una parte de desordenado, porque desordenado es messy, muy bien. Sucio. Exactly. ¿Qué lugar considerarían un dingy place? Sucio, no es atractivo, desordenado. Yes, no estamos describiendo ninguna casa, ¿verdad? No, sino dando ejemplos. Mi cuarto, teacher, ¿no? Sí, el cuarto de mi hijo, dicen. <ríe> no, dicen, dingy, unattractive and messy. Sí, hace referencia a eso, sucio, desordenado. Ok, and run down. ¿Qué es esto entonces? A rundown place. Do you remember the two pictures at the beginning? Las dos imágenes que les, que les mostré. Dingy. Ahora ya saben describir esta. Esta es una round down. Round down. ¿Qué pasa con este tipo de adjetivo? Describe qué tipo de vivienda. Old. And in poor condition. In poor que lo único que queda es demoler este lugar. Okay? It's a very run down place which we cannot spend some extra money in order to repair that place. No. You better look for another place. Yes, because it's a run down place. Vamos. Mario, modern and expensive. Give me the definitions, please. Okay. Modern design and made using the most recent ideas and methods and expensive, costing a lot of money. That's all right. Excellent pronunciation. Modern, of course, as you may see, it's uh, a place in which um, we have the most recent ideas and method. Expensive. It's a place in which you need to pay a lot of money, a big quantity of money in order to have a, in this case, a very convenient place to live in. ¿Sí? ¿Alguna pregunta de estos? Que todo esto lo vamos a ocupar mañana. Cramped, small, spacious, huge, dangerous, safe, dingy, run down, modern and expensive. ¿Quedó claro? Esto se lo voy a compartir también. Don't you worry. Yes, okay. Revisemos los últimos tres. We have noisy, quiet, and private. Margarita, ayúdenos a leer. Go, please. Noisy, quiet, and private. The last three examples. Noisy, making a lot, making a lot of noise, noisy, loud, quiet, making very little noise, private. Only right. for one person, private. Only for one person or group and not for everyone. That's it. Thank you. Noisy, as it says, making a lot of noise. ¿Qué lugar considerarían a noisy place to live in that you wouldn't like to live there? Noisy houses or places. Where can we find this type of place? The stadium. Yeah, right. Exactly. Places or houses that are just, you know, across from a stadium or near. Okay. The opposite, quiet. ¿En dónde encontramos un lugar así? Quiet. Where can we find a space like this? In the mountain. Yes, right. 
in the countryside, the mountains. Very, very quiet place to live in. And private, ¿a qué se refiere privado? Private. ¿A dinero? ¿Será que se refiere a dinero? Exclusivo, no, ¿verdad? Private. No. It's a place in which not everyone has access to. Right? Only for one group of people. It's not for everyone. Yes? Give me examples of private areas in El Salvador. How do we call those private areas to live in? Yes. Last? ¿Cómo se le llaman esos lugares privados? Mm. Esos neighborhoods, the fancy neighborhoods that we have. ¿Sí? Mm. Residenciales, ¿sí? ¿Han escuchado ese término? Residencial. Neighborhood. ¿Cómo dicen entonces residencial o hacen referencia a un lugar privado? Private neighborhoods. Private neighborhoods. Así sería. Class, para finalizar, help me out. Which are positive and which are negative adjectives. ¿Qué opinan entonces? Ya los conocimos, ya vimos la definition in English. Ahora ya saben. Positive and negatives. Let's go, class. Number one, right. What is your opinion about right? Is this a positive or negative adjective? Positive. positive. Yes. Do you agree on this one, class? Lo demás? Yes. Yes. Comfortable. Positive. Positive. Yes, negative. Positive. Yeah, of positive. course, it's positive. Convenient. Positive. positive. Okay. Cramped. Negative. Negative. Negative, yes. Negative. Dangerous. Negative. Negative. Of course, it's dangerous. Dark. Negative. Negative. ¿Qué piensan? ¿Es negativo? Okay. Dingy. Ya conocemos Negative. ese. Negative. Dingy. Negative. Negative. Expensive. Negative. It depends, right? It depends. <laughs> So, if I have the money to pay, for me, it wouldn't be negative, right? But if I don't have the money or if enough money, of course yeah. it's negative. So, let's, why don't we pick this one? Negative and positive at the same time. Huge. Huge. Piensan de un lugar enorme, huge. Positive. Of course, if positive, inconvenient. Negative. Yes. Modern. Positive. Okay. Noisy. Negative. Yes. We don't like noisy places, right? Private. Positive. Okay. Quiet. Positive. Positive. Run down. Negative. 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 Small. Mm -hmm. aquí, it depends, right? Yeah. What is your opinion, class? Negative, positive? Yeah. It depends. Depends the number of members. Exactly, it depends of exactly the number of people who wants to go and live in that place. If it is only me, that's all right. It's convenient. But if not, it can be the opposite, right? So let's do the same. It can be negative for some people, and it can be. Oh, sorry. And the last one, spacious. Spacious. Positive. This is positive, right? ¿Qué otro adjetivo ocuparía en clase? Algunos que se les ocurra que no está en nuestra lista. Luxury. Yes, right. Luxury. What else? Cheap. Hmm? Old. Okay, old. 
According to this information. Usen okay. tres adjetivos para describir su casa o apartamento. Use three of these adjectives to describe your house or apartment. Vamos, clase. Concluyamos con eso. What can you tell me about your house or apartment? Noisy. Is it noisy? Oh, no. Yes. My house is small, quiet, okay. and, and, and that's it. Wow. Nice. You're very lucky. It's comfortable. It's comfortable. Uh, bright. Private? Bright. Yes. Oh, bright, bright, yes. Okay. And, and quiet. And quiet. Okay. And safe. Mm -hmm. It's precious. Is it luxurious? Looks so comfortable. Yeah, que sí, yes, teacher, of course. Bueno. Vamos a pausar la clase. Qué rápido se nos van las clases. No se vale. Let me send this picture. Tomorrow, as the first activity, you're going to talk to your classmates. Yes? You are going to interchange information about your house apartment. Por eso les envío ahorita al grupo the picture with the adjectives. ¿Será que necesitamos la descripción también? ¿Se los envío con descripción? Yes or not? Yes. yes. To send it? Okay. Don't forget to practice, okay? Read the information. Try to use these adjectives as well. Okay, class. Time is over. Thank you so much for coming tonight, participating. We are going to continue tomorrow. Gracias por el esfuerzo, chicos. Nos vemos cuando. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, what time? Tomorrow. Eight. 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 Right. Solo asegurarme si Ana Jamilet no pudo ingresar en Jonathan. No. Y Stephanie. No, ¿verdad, chicos? Va, entonces así quedaría la asistencia. Gracias, clase. Nos vemos mañana, ¿ok? Thank you, teacher. Night, teacher. Night, night. 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 Night.